Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do another reading of Lace and Shaggy Locks. So let's just hop right into this. We left off on chapter 4 and the prompt for this one was sand. Avril stared out at the water and kicked the sand at her feet dejectedly. This was supposed to have been her holiday on the Mediterranean with Cujo, but he decided to stay with Victorica at the last moment. I don't understand why he likes her, she muttered under her breath. Of course, she'd never seen the Golden Fairy. Maybe if she had, she would understand. And maybe it was better if she hadn't seen the Golden Fairy, so she wouldn't know just how ugly she was in comparison. Why can't he like me? Tears pricked Avril's eyes. Is something wrong, Avril? Her grandmother's kind voice spoke at her back. Avril turned to look at her grandmother, but she didn't stand or even respond. She simply watched her grandmother. Her grandmother calmly returned her gaze until Avril gathered up the words to speak. I'm fine. Her grandmother raised an eyebrow. Really? You look lonely without a friend. Avril felt anger surge up in her. I should have had a friend, she shouted, but he decided not to come at the last minute. Understanding lit her grandmother's eyes. So that's what it is. Avril turned away angrily and stared at the sea. You don't understand, grandman. On the contrary, her grandmother began. She sat on the beach next to her. I understand very well. I was young once. Old people always say that, Avril grumbled. Her grandmother chuckled. That's because it's true, dear. One doesn't reach my age without first being yours. Finally, Avril felt her defenses weakening. She rested her head on her grandmother's shoulder and began to tell her about Cujo. Maybe she couldn't earn him any easier by the telling, but it would be nice not to silently bear this hurt anymore. Alright, and on to the next chapter, which is prompt number five, Glass. Victorica stares at the stained glass window. I'm bored, she thinks. This is not a new sensation. She is almost always dreadfully bored. Only when Cujo comes, and sometimes when Blois comes, is she freed from her boredom. The window is very pretty. Lots of bright colors for the light to shine through in bright rainbow waves. But it wasn't particularly interesting. Victorica is not interested in beauty unless there is a mystery attached. And stained glass windows are no mystery. Idly, she turned her eyes away from the window. Her gaze wanders to the top of the stairs, tracing the bit of banister visible from where she sits. She wishes Cujo would come racing up the stairs, some mo new mystery for her to ponder on his tongue. She sits and stares at the st top of the stairs for a long time. She forgets even her boredom and simply stares. Eventually, she grows tired of this and realizes that her legs are beginning to ache. She sighs and rises to her feet. Briefly, her gaze locks on the window once more. It really is quite beautiful, like something out of a picture book. If only its beauty were enough to keep her attention, enough to drive the eternal boredom away. She looks away towards the elevator. She makes her way towards it, and from there to her house at the end of the maze. Alright, and I think, looking at this next one, which is a little longer... This will be the last one for this episode, but this is prompt number six, church. You look lovely, Victorica, Avril whispered softly. Today, especially, she could see why Cujo had picked Victorica. She'd always been pretty, like a doll, but today she looked less like porcelain and more like a model. The white gown fit Victorica more perfectly than anything Avril had ever seen. The sleeves were loose and lacy, matching the flowing skirt. There was no train on the dress, but it wasn't really necessary, as the style wasn't something that Victorica would wear. Victorica's strangely silver hair seemed to shine, its brightness amplified by the whiteness of the dress it rested upon. Of course, farting newt, Victorica responded, sounding grumpy. Today is the one day loveliness is assured for any person. Avril laughed, though she was pretty sure Victorica wasn't making some sort of joke. This is just like old times, she exclaimed and threw her arms around Victorica. You calling me a newt and all? Victorica merely grumbled under her breath. After a few seconds, she pushed at Avril's grip on her. Get off me, farting newt. 
Avril obligingly backed away. She paused only to straighten the must she had left in Victorica's hair. Of course, Avril said with a smile. This is your day. I shouldn't be bothering you, should I? You should never bother me. Victorica sounded a little less grouchy now that Avril's arms weren't dangling around her. Come on, V, put on a smile. Now that it was so many years after their school days, Avril had taken to calling Victorica V, if for no other reason than that it was faster to say, and that every time she said Victorica, she heard Cujo's voice saying it as well. Then she tried to avoid painful reminders of her crush on him. In a sense, the whole day already felt as if it were dedicated to that, and she was searching for ways to just be happy for the couple, instead of regretful that Cujo had been so faithful and dedicated to her. Victorica glared at Avril. Go away. I don't need any more help. Still as stubborn as ever, Avril thought, smiling slightly as she ducked out of the room. Apart from her now silver hair, the years had hardly seemed to change Victorica at all. In the hallway, Victorica had bumped into Cujo. They bounced slightly away from each other with a light oof sound. Sorry, Cujo. Avril apologized. Her lips were... Uh, even turned in an apologetic smile. I should watch where I'm going. Cujo shook his head, not letting her take the blame. No, I'm really distracted today. I should be paying more attention to what I'm doing. Avril laughed. Cujo, today is your day to act like that. You're getting married. You can't be faulted for it. Cujo joined her in laughter and shook his head again in disagreement. No, just because I'm getting married doesn't mean I shouldn't be careful about what I'm doing. A voice called his name from the hall. Well, I've got to go. It takes a lot of work to get married. I'm sure it does. Avril could feel her smile growing tighter on her face as she strained to keep her expression pleasant. You just hurry along and get married. Cujo grinned and his fingers brushed her arm for a moment. Thanks, he said as though the word was really unnecessary. Since it was his wedding day, you know. Avril... A masculine voice called from the opposite end of the hall that Cujo had just run down. Avril glanced down the hall and grimaced. The voice belonged to exactly whom she thought it belonged to. Her date. Why had she thought it was a good idea to bring a date to Cujo's wedding? She didn't know. Or maybe she did and just didn't want to examine her reasons too closely. Because it revolved around people's perception of her having moved on from her crush on Cujo. Which, after all these years... She still clearly hadn't. Even after all these years, Cujo still didn't recognize the difference. I'm coming, Martin. I just had to congratulate the bride, she called, attempting to sound cheery as she walked down the hall towards him. She could see Martin smile as she drew closer in his outstretched arm, which he probably intended to wrap around her shoulder when she was close enough. She'd met Martin in the intervening years between school and being reunited with Cujo and Victorica, and lately his favorite thing to do was walk around with his arm around Avril's shoulder. She wished she could like him as much as he seemed to like her. And how was the bride? he asked when she was in a more comfortable range for speaking to. Avril considered for a moment. She was now in his reach, and as she had expected, his arm settled over her shoulder. Not really what I would have expected. It's portrayed in books as nervous brides and abruptly doubting if you've picked the right person, but she seemed calm sure of her choice. And why shouldn't she be? She and Cujo had been together since our school days. Even if we all were separated physically for a while, Avril thought despondently. Martin squeezed her shoulder gently as they began to head back towards the chapel where the ceremony would actually take place. Do you think you'll be so sure on your wedding day? Avril stared at Martin. That almost sounded like a proposal. Finally, she regained her senses enough to shrug in what she hoped came off as an off-handed manner. I don't suppose I'll know that until I get there. Martin nodded, apparently finding this to be an acceptable answer. They entered the chapel in silence and took their seats, quietly waiting for the ceremony to begin. Alright, so that's my part two of my Lace and Shaggy Locks fanfic. We've now gone through six parts. Out of the 50, so we still have a lot more to go, but hopefully you guys have been enjoying. I'm certainly enjoying going back on this. I really love the Gothic series, and I love all these characters, and it's kind of fun to go back on some of the things that I wrote for them and see that again. So I'm enjoying myself, at least.
But anyways, leave comments down below. Um, yeah, again, I'm the author, swimmer, poet on fanfiction. If you want to look through any of my others and request some other fanfictions for me to read here, that would be the way to do it. Anyways, this is the Umlaut Harper signing out.